Welcome to Bible 180, Jonah. Jonah is a prophet from the northern kingdom of Israel. Yahweh sends him to prophesy against the Gentile city of Nineveh. Nineveh was the capital city of one of the greatest, but also cruelest nations of the ancient world, the Assyrians. The Assyrians were currently destroying most of the nations surrounding Israel, inventing things like crucifixion and wide-scale deportation. Eventually, they would decimate the northern kingdom Jonah lived in as well. Jonah jumped ship on this mission by, well, jumping onto a ship headed in the opposite direction. The Lord's judgment now falls on Jonah, and a storm threatens to capsize the boat he's in. The sailors wonder why this is happening. Jonah tells them it's his fault, and that the Hebrew god of the skies, land, and sea has created this storm. Jonah tells them to sacrifice him, and they will be saved. When the waters grow calm, the sailors greatly feared this Lord and offered sacrifices and made vows to him. Jonah is swallowed by a great sea creature. In its belly, Jonah prays, From the depths of the grave I called to you and you listened to my cry. I had been banished from your sight, but you heard my prayer and rescued me. The creature spits him back up on dry land and Jonah goes to Nineveh. He says, The Lord will overthrow Nineveh in 40 days. Surprisingly, the Ninevites believe. Their king proclaims a feast, a day of fasting, sackcloth, repentance, and calling on the name of the Lord. God has mercy, but Jonah whines. I knew you'd had mercy on my enemies. You are a God who is slow to anger, who relents from sending calamity. Just kill me now. Jonah pouts on a hillside overlooking the city, hoping that Yahweh would change his mind and burn it up anyway. The Lord then makes a vine to grow up and provide Jonah with shade on this sunny, scorching hillside. But then the Lord makes the vine wither. Jonah complains again, and the Lord responds, You are upset that this vine has died, even though you didn't plant it, and you did nothing to nurture it or make it grow, yet you care about it. But Nineveh has 120,000 people. Should I not be concerned with its inhabitants? Even if the evil nation responds when God calls them to repent, his own people refuse to. In fact, Jonah doesn't want God to show mercy he, to anyone else. Jonah wants vengeance. But God judges so that people will repent and so that he can relent. The sailors, even the wicked Ninevites, recognize this better than Jonah or God's people in general. This is why God gives his people, particularly the Pharisees, Jesus gives them the sign of Jonah as proof that he is sent from God. Jonah is the prophet who Jesus compares himself to. Jonah is left for dead, but three days later, he is restored to the world. His second life means God's plan can finally be completed. The plan? to preach God's judgment first, and second, to deliver forgiveness and life, not only to the Jews, but to the Gentiles as well. Jonah is also God's prophet who both preaches and bears the judgment of God. In both cases, the judgment of God actually reveals God's mercy and concern for the whole world.